Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Commodore 64 Basic. Now this is a beginner's tutorial so no uh, prior knowledge is expected um, and uh, there will be four programs demonstrated here and I'll describe what's going on um, while I'm sort of doing the tutorial. Um, now here's the screen that you get when you turn on the Commodore 64 now, to load from the disk, or to at least get the direct the uh, the files which are on the disk, it's um, load comma dollar sign comma and then eight eight is the drive number. Um, now I'll type in list and uh, diacom. Uh, we'll see what that program is when I open it up. Now to open it up, you type in load um, diacom. Uh, quotation mark, comma, eight, and list the program. It's very short. It's only one line. Um, now, what this does is it prints Commodore diagonally um, inside the uh, the interface here. Um, the ten. Now, that's a line number. With certain versions of BASIC, uh, line numbers aren't required. You know, the sort of modern versions, like uh, QBASIC. Uh, but with these older ones, um, they they require line numbers. And 10 is just... The reason why it's 10 and not, say, 1, is because in case you want to insert lines in between 0 and 10, or 1 and 10, then you can do that. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, etc. So, but anyway, print. Now, the print keyword puts uh, characters onto the screen. Um, now, th some of those uh, characters don't go onto the screen. What they do is they position the cursor, and the only thing that winds up visible is the Commodore that's uh, in the middle of those characters there. But the the quotation marks are the de delimiters, and they tell uh, the the, the basic interpreter where the, um, the, the thing to be put on the screen begins and ends and so we'll go ahead and run this and uh, that first heart there for example that actually clears the screen so run and there it is Commodore so <laughs> just a simple little program um, now we'll have a look at a different one here uh, <coughs> unit converter. Okay. Load unit conv because that's the file name uh, in quotation comma 8 and it goes ahead and loads it. Uh, I'll list the program so that we can look at it. Um, with um, listing the program uh, if I, if you had a long program and it didn't all fit on the screen or it was several screens long or even longer, the way to list part of the program is to say list 20 to uh, 50 and it'll just list those lines. But we want to look at the whole thing here because I'm trying to describe it. Um, at line 10 there's a, the name gets printed on the screen. At line 15 there's an input statement uh, with a prompt uh, that, that is made up by the things in between the quotation marks followed by a semicolon and a C dollar sign. C dollar sign is a string variable so all, with uh, basic it'll, it'll assume that if, if it was C then it would be uh, an integer whereas C dollar signs is, is uh, characters, strings uh, basically uh, at line 20, uh, there's pretty much the same thing, except it's asking them for the, you know, the number, the the units. Um, at line 30, there's a formula, just a textbook formula for converting from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, and then the, at, at line 40, it's um, Celsius to Fahrenheit. 
uh, the formula for that. And um, at line 50, uh, if the um, if C dollar signs equals F, then print Celsius. Uh, so that's a it it's a conditional statement. So if C, if this condition, the the thing that follows if is true, then it will put on, print uh, Celsius and then and then put the the number there, which is stored in variable X. And 60 does pretty much the same thing, except it uh, puts the Fahrenheit on the screen. Um, now, uh, so that's how that works, but we'll go and run it to, to test it. Um, unit converter Fahrenheit to Celsius, or Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, how about Celsius to Fahrenheit? Uh, 23 is 73.4 deg degrees in Fahrenheit. Now the other way around, we'll test that. that that's working properly. Um, uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, 100 degrees is 37.7 repeater or thereabouts. So that seems like it's working. Um, now, uh, load dollar sign eight. List list the programs on the disk. Okay, the next program that I wrote here is uh, running average. The name of the program there is abbreviated. Um, and list it. Okay, so at the top of the program here, it prints the the name onto the screen. It the reason I do that is um, uh, it lets the user know what the program's doing. Um, <laughs> And um, so, at line 15 though, there's uh, s some uh, variables are set to zero. At line 20, there's the input uh, of a number, um, and the the caption says that enter number or minus one to stop. So they got a way out of using a way to stop the program without using. I think on Commodore 64s, there's a, a break key or something to that effect, and you can get out of a program if you want to. But it's nice to have an alternative way. Um, at line 25, if the number is less than zero, then end. End is a keyword, and what it does is it terminates the program and brings them back to immediate mode. Uh, with line 30, C equals C plus 1. Uh, that's the count of how many numbers they've entered. And 40, X equals X plus N. So X is the total of all the numbers they've entered. Um, because every time it goes over this, remember this is in a loop, so every time that piece of code executes, it adds the, the number that they entered to, to the uh, X. So at 45, um, A equals x divided by count. So the answer uh, is the total divided by how many numbers they've entered. Um, at 50 it prints uh, the answer onto the screen. I just used A, so A for answer. But um, Commodore 64 basic, uh, you can use two letters. It recognizes the first two letters um, as uh, def as defining what the a variable is uh, is named as. Um, now at line 60 there it says go to 20 so it puts it into a loop and then they enter more numbers uh, you know potentially 
could go on and on. So we'll run the program. Uh, 10. So the, the running average is 10 so far. 20 should be 15. 0 goes back to 10. And if I put in another 0, it's 7.5. So minus 1 to stop. Uh, run it again. Uh, 1999, like the year 1999, uh, 2007, uh, and this year 2012. And the average for those years is 2006. So minus one to stop there. And, um, yeah. The final program here is uh, DICE, which is uh, produces 10 random numbers. Uh, load DICE 8 list. Okay, um, at the top, once again, there's the name of the program. Uh, then I is set to 1. Uh, V1 is a it has a random number put into it, uh, and uh, 30 it puts the random number onto the screen, followed by an integer version of the random number because the first one was floating point. And in line 40, i equals i plus 1. 50 if i is less than or equal to 10, then go to 20. So we'll run it and. Uh, there we are. So the the C64 has uh, generated some numbers there. So not too sure what the use of this program would be, but it was mainly just to demonstrate uh, how to ge generate random numbers. Yeah. So okay, as a footnote to this video, I'll show you how to load and save programs. So I'll write a quick program. Ten print. Hello world and say save quotation mark hello that's the name of the program and if you press enter it, it'll save it to a tape uh, but I'll, I'll save it to a disk instead by putting comma 8 and it saves takes a couple of seconds and then um, I'll list the program and say new to get to clear the memory. Now if I list again there won't be anything there. Um, if I say load um, asterisk quotation mark comma 8 it should load the first thing on the disk and say um, list and there it is hello world. Um, with loading from the tape it's pretty much you just type in load and press enter and it'll find the first thing there um, and uh, just an another quick remark uh, you can get Commodore 64's off eBay uh, uh, that is physical real ones or you can use the emulators such as uh, Winvice, that's the emulator I'm using here this book might be helpful for people who want to learn how to program the Commodore 64. It's called Basic Commodore 64 Basic by James S. Cohen. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching. Bye.